you have HP hotkeys and this allows you to configure the keys that come on top of the keyboard. The other device I have, the IRO 8000 also has that and well, I'm going to reassign that, for example, I'm never going to use Internet Explorer. You have some other applications that you can use to control screen brightness and so on. And you can also configure these hard icons here that you get on the side and launch other configuration options. Yeah, so I don't know why you would want to start set up here. It's something that you don't do often, but you have the option here. I just encourage you to do that. You can dial stuff, which is something that no one would do as well. And here you can launch, launch media player. And that's something I'm gonna experiment with later on. I'm gonna encode a video to run on this. And I think it could even be a decent movie watching experience for a train journey or so on, because the device stays up on its own and the screen is super wide. So this ultra wide cinema movies could actually even look nice. The next option that we have here, HP security. Aha, so I can assign a password, put a password reminder here, and even have a log of when the device was used. That is something odd for an offline device. Then we have HP settings. Oh, that I just showed. Okay. Next, we have Office. And if you want to see more details on these applications, uh, go to my other video. The link is going to be uh, in the description below. And I go through all the Office applications. Outlook is the same, yeah? Go to the video and I'm showing you how, how it goes. I have also showed there before, Windows Explorer, we had a look, so we have the default um, Windows view here, and if you go to the Windows folder, almost everything that comes in the ROM is here, for some reason, so all applications are just dumped here. This screen refreshes quite fast for a passive um, screen. And you can see small icons, there's a waste of a row here. And if you go to details, you can arrange by type and so on. Yes, yeah, so you can open HP this off. That's probably just turn the screen off. And that's probably what this on and off screen does. So you see every hardware button is assigned to software, which is cool. And I think there's a lot of potential to customize the device based on that. Let's see what is next. Media player. Windows Media Player looks like this. This is a hybrid between Windows 2000 and Windows XP Media Player. I'm not sure what it can do. The speaker is awful as expected. You're listening to the Windows Media Player for handheld PC. For handheld PC. Wow. There's some quality here, options, version 1.2, it supports MPT files, which is basically essential, help loads the normal HTML help, you can open WMA and MP3 file, and how, can you watch videos on this? I think it's only for audio. This is bad. I know that someone tried to compile VLC and I think it only opens for the command prompt. Um, but anyway, you can create playlists, see the file info, adjust volume, you know, scroll, fast forward, repeat, etc. Windows Media Player works as this only. Um, I think uh, the ver previous version has a, a shortcut to the command prompt, but here we don't have one. But 
if you go to run here and write cmd, you get a command prompt. It's a huge improvement compared to the previous version. Now it supports uh, batch files and I see that console redirection works, output redirection works a bit better. I'm gonna dive into what you can do with this uh, in my full review. Mm, favorites, well, if you're using Internet Explorer, you can quickly open your favorite sites here, same here, um, Windows style, the last most recent open documents, settings, let's see taskbar first, no news, you can make the applications take over, you can hide it when you're not using, so you have a bit more vertical screen real estate, you can show and hide the clock. Again, if you need some space, you can do it. As you can see, it's not like in Windows that you get a preview. Yeah, here you will need to confirm, uh, which is kind of a pain, but I can understand you saving every single CPU cycle on this thing. You can clear the documents menu here. So you can see that this is the Windows 98 uh, recycle bin. And if you go to the desktop, you have the Windows 2000 recycle bin. And that's the same thing I saw in the previous version of Windows C, where you have Windows 98 recycle bin, and the, di and the dialog boxes show the Windows 95 one, which I like. This from Windows 98 is the worst. Then we can go here again to control panel. Different options, communications are the same. You can give your device a name. I'm gonna do that later. You can choose the port used for active sync from a list of available ports. If you have a internet card, you can even do it via network, assuming that you have the right version of, how's it called? Active Sync. Okay. Uh, yeah, name your device. So I think it can even show me the network. Then dialing. So basically, your area code. So it chooses where, when to dial long distance or not. You can create different locations and so on. Display. Classic display settings. Uh, wallpaper. There are many wallpaper options. You can have the logo, Windows 2000 style. You can have, I'm gonna cancel this. You can also choose the Windows color scheme, just like you can be in Windows 95 or 98, right? It works as you expect. Hotkeys you already showed, so you can customize it. HP security already showed, uh, password protection, internet options. I think it's a bit different. So you can choose your home page, cache options. If you go to connections, you can auto dial if that's the case. That was useful when we had dial up. You can use a proxy server. And this is something I'm gonna try to use to open modern web browsers. I'm gonna see if I can set up a web server that will basically transform the pages into a bitmap or something. We will see. In advanced, you can see, you can customize it, no TLS, which is basically a problem. Uh, security settings, keyboard, Windows 95 style icon. You can choose how the keyboard reacts. There's no way to write international characters here. You cannot change the input language. It's all preset by the manufacturer. Network, here we have more drivers installed compared to the other device, any 2000. It's the most compatible uh, Windows C driver. You can have this LPE. Um, I don't know what all, all these devices are. You can identify your device. You can maybe even join a domain. <laughs> I doubt this works, but we can try. I will set up a Windows 2000 server VM somewhere. Owner. So this shows the owner information. And yeah, I have to Power. Here you can choose how the display reacts, the status of the backup battery, 
Um, if you want to power the screen on touch, you can see power saving tips here and so on. So even sounds would make a difference. If you have sounds off, probably the sound card turns off. I can hear the sound chip turning off on the eye arrow. It makes a pop sound and this all saves a bit of battery. Yeah, and this was important in the past. Regional settings, again, how your characters work, numbers counting, time, if you use 24 hours or not, and if you have, uh, you know, the standard American way or European way, I'm gonna change this later, but good enough for these. Remove programs. Here, if you, see, if you install extra programs, yeah, listed here, you cannot add programs. I think at some point Windows started supporting installing from cap files, but at this moment, in history, I think still had to use Active Sync, and as you can see here, Windows Notify style recycle bin icon, and that's it. Then configuration for this LP device, and I think this is the one I got from eBay, and it's gonna arrive eventually. You can have a link indicator on the taskbar. You can auto launch the driver. No idea how this works, but we're gonna try. Here you can adjust recalibrate and you can also configure the double tap. You know, if your precision is smaller, Windows is gonna still consider the target, for example. Uh, in system, we have the RAM allocation. As you can see, it's a, a little bit more memory than the previous version of Windows CE, and you can choose if to allocate more for storage or for a program execution, and for now I'll leave it like this. It's enough RAM for my use. You get the processor information, I think this is running at 206 MHz, 32 MB of RAM. This one has only two expansion slots, they are both empty. Core Windows CE 3 with IE4 and Pocket Outlook 3.1. And Office is version 3, I think it's the same as my, my other device, and it is registered to me. Here is where you can, you know, disable the sounds to save battery. You can adjust the volume, and if you go to sounds, you have startup you never hear because it's always on, but you can have sound effects for everything and at some point in history you people would really like to every single sub menu make a sound. And the last option here is the world clock that we saw already a few times. You can choose some custom cities, create some alarms, choose where you are and customize the device to your liking. And this is what you get when you get a HP Jornada 720. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Finally, this is documented. I couldn't see a proper walkthrough like this in YouTube before. Stay tuned. In a couple of weeks, I should come up with a full review of my currently three Windows CE devices. And I'm waiting for a Windows CE 5 device. So we're going to have Windows CE 2, 3, five and six available in-house and I'll document the history, use cases and why I would use these today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.